ears, then you can see the full outline of my... <laughs> Do you know how many f messages? Like, I was getting texts. Yeah, I had to delete some. My grandmother follows me. She goes, <gasps> I've got a hot take on the AI more situation. I was, <laughs> so, I was so f embarrassed. Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 288 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast right on time. Guys, uh, I might be going away for a while, okay, because I uh, accidentally, all right, committed a crime of which I am innocent, okay? A lot of people, they do crime and they go, I didn't do it, okay? A lot of those guys did that shit, all right? But in this scenario... I am a victim of circumstance and I'm here to talk to you about it today, all right? Because this because I've been thinking about this a lot and uh, and I th I think allegedly Look, I'll, let me just tell you the situation and then I'll explain why I may have sexually harassed an old woman. Okay? And now now I understand that that sentence has a lot of prejudice attached to it, okay? We we in, in a civilized society, generally speaking, don't like, you know, fully grown adult males going around sexually harassing old women, senior citizens. But in this case, she deserved it. No, that's not what happened. In this case, that's not what happened. It's one of those things where I have my memory of the incident and she has hers, all right? And and it's it's, you know what it is? It's one, normally I fucking hate the phrase, my truth. I don't like that fr that phrase because there is the truth and then there is an opinion, all right? But in this scenario, I will allow it. There is her truth and there is my truth. And because of circumstances outside both of our control, technically both those truths are correct because perception's reality, baby. That's how the world works, right? And 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 right now, in her truth, I am perceived as a as a, as an insane sexual harasser. But I'm in but in my truth, the only truth that matters, I'm an innocent. I'm just an innocent man. I'm just an innocent man, and I haven't done anything wrong. If this is your first episode of the Spearhead Sundays podcast, I hope it won't be your last. Welcome. Okay. Now let me paint the scene for you okay so i uh am going to uh a store to buy bedware right i'm at a store that sells bed sheets bed cloths mattress covers why why am i there because i'm in a relationship with a woman so i have to frequent these hell holes these hellish boxes of fucking $80 fabric with polka dots on it. It's awful, okay? Now, keep in mind, I don't want to be there. Now, when I don't want to be somewhere, guess whose problem it is? Hers, okay? Because I'm not going to help. I'm not going to suggest ideas. I'm just there because if I wasn't, she would get upset. That's a date when you've been with someone for 10 years. <laughs> no, we needed we needed uh we needed a some mattress protector thing, right? So so I am invested in this cuz I do spend a lot of time in bed. I don't do any sleeping, but I do spend a lot of time in there. Right? Can't wait for my first news. So, we're at the Now keep in mind it's very important. I want you to understand it's very important that we are at a a bedding store that sells bedding, okay? Now also, important, side note, we just adopted a cat. Another one. Yeah, I know. And I said, no. This is when I wasn't living here. I was living at my parents because I was having a little breakdown, right? And then my girlfriend had a little breakdown. And then all of a sudden, we got a cat that, that after I came back, both of us went, well, we don't really need him, do we? You know? We almost became those people that were like, oh, we wanted a puppy for Christmas. But then it grew up into a dog, so we fucking kicked it out of the house and told it to play in traffic i wanted a puppy for a viral video but it kind of it kind of just weed and and uh and and it didn't listen to me even though i didn't train it so i'm going to send it back to the pound and to have it put down in two weeks i adopted a cat because i was sad and now i'm not sad so the cats fulfill its purpose i'm going to open a window that's how we're feeling we're not going to do that 
And the cat is growing on me, but let's just say this. He's annoying. He's an annoying little man. All right, the first male pet in this house, and he's an annoying little man. His name is Ziggy. And I know this sounds like a tangent, but all of this information is crucial to my truth. Because right now, in your brain, I'm, I'm some kind of sexual predator who harasses old women in public, in front of many people. But let, let me plead my innocent, let me plead my case, and you'll be on my side, and you'll know that she deserved... No, it's not... Listen, we got it, cat, okay? Now, we had two other cats, all right? One of them's very old, Okay, that's very crucial. We've got a new young male cat and we have an old female cat. Very important. Now, this old female cat, her name's Lady, and she acts very curmudgeonly. Don't know what that word is? You've got to read more books. All right? Now, we frequently refer to her. Her nickname is Grandma. All right? Very important. We've got a young cat, young male cat, and then we've got an old grandma cat called Grandma. Okay? Now, we adopt this cat, and all of a sudden, he thinks that Lady, the old cat, is super fuckable. And he chases her around the house trying to fuck her. I don't know why. He's been desexed. He has no balls. She just must be a really fuckable grandma. That's a very important part in the story. I have a young cat, and he's chasing after an old cat that we call, lovingly, Grandma. All right? Now, we go to the bedding store. Here's the story. Now, I'm going to let you guys decide which version, version of truth you support, but I thoroughly encourage you to support my truth and not hers, okay? We're in the betting store, all right? Me and my girl, lost in conversation, having a great back and forth, talking about this cat. Neither of us really want to be there. It's a betting store, okay? We're just walking through. We're not really looking for anything. We're having a chat about the new cat, okay? Now, I jokingly say, okay, uh... I'm, I'm acting out what's happened. We're both talking, oh my God, we can't believe that this young male cat is trying to have sex with our old cat. He's being de-sexed. That's crazy. And then I go, oh, well, she must be a really hot grandma. And then I imitated the young cat and I went, ooh, sexy grandma. And then about five steps in front of me, I hear the most horrified gasp I've ever heard in my life. And I look over to see what's happened and I see that there is an old lady standing five feet in front of me in the fucking lingerie section of the bedding store and she heard me go, ooh, sexy grandma. And she obviously thinks, rightfully so, that I just saw her browsing underwear and went, ooh, sexy grandma. Why the fuck do they have lingerie in a bedding store? I, I thought I was going to get kicked out. She was fucking horrified. Rightfully so. I didn't know she was there. I was there to buy a fucking mattress cover. I ended up calling some woman a sexy grandma while she looks at underwear. And I realized I went through everything thing that I said in the, pre, in the conversation before the gasp. And I, I literally imitating my cat. I went, oh, look, a sexy grandma. Ooh, sexy grandma. <laughs> to this poor old woman who was just trying to buy a bra. But why are they selling it at the bedding store? I never would have said that shit if I was at Victoria's Secret. I would have watched my fucking language. I, I, I don't know. Why would they do that to me? I'm a victim. You know, this is why every now and then, okay, we could put a grain of salt in that believe all women shit because if she went to the cops, she would have a great story and that would sound true as fuck. But I'd have a better story, my truth. What am I going to say? Oh, sorry, Ossifer. I was actually imitating my cat having sex with my older cat and doing stupid voices to make my girlfriend laugh in the bedding store. And that's why I said, oh, look, a hot grandma, sexy grandma. It had nothing to do with the old woman browsing lingerie right in front of me at the store. 
the cops will go, you didn't see it? And I would say, genuinely, no, I'm a fucking idiot, all right? I'm not very aware of my surroundings, especially not when I'm doing act outs of cats trying to fuck each other because I don't want to be in a mattress store. And really, that's whose fault it is. I think my girlfriend should be arrested for trying to take me to the bedding store. It's her fault that this happened. And to that old lady, if you're out there, I'm very sorry. And I understand that, that look, from your point of view, I definitely sexually harassed you. But in my truth, I was just doing a silly little bit about my silly little cats. And that has, that has nothing to do with your pussy. I was talking about mine. And... I mean, we all have these stories, don't we, of, of you saying something or someone overhearing an out-of-context thing and then you not being able to, like, uh, explain yourself. Because I, did, I didn't get a chance to explain myself because what happened was I heard the gasp, right, and I'm such an idiot, okay? Did, I go, oh, look, a hot grandma, sexy grandma. She goes, oh. <gasps> looks at me horrified, puts down the fucking bra she was holding and then waddles away as quickly as she can because she was quite old, horrified. And then I looked behind me. <laughs> like, what is this bitch looking at? What's she seen? And then I didn't think anything of it. And then I did the whole fucking bed store transaction we picked out what we wanted we went oh this feels soft this feels no oh, i think i'll get too hot in that i like the color on this but i don't like the material we did that whole fucking bit we buy the mattress and then as i'm walking out the store i'm going what was that woman horrified about and i rewind the tape in my brain and i go oh i sexually harassed her accidentally and there is and there's no way for me to explain myself because she was gone which makes it look even worse because basically she was facing away from me. So all she heard was, oh, look, a hot grandma. Oh, sexy grandma. And then she looked at me and then I just fucking walked away. So it definitely looks like I did that shit at her for a laugh. Or because I thought she was a sexy grandma. And now, now what I find hilarious is in her brain that actually happened to her. You know, like that, and she's probably told fucking 15 people about that. She might even she might even have told the fucking manager of the mattress store, I might walk in there next month to buy pillowcases and find out that I've been banned for life, my fucking pictures printed on the back wall of the place. Do not serve this man, he's a sexual harasser. And now there's like a little butterfly effect of, this old grandma going, telling her kids and her husband and her family and other old ladies at the fucking church about the horrible and terrifyingly large man with braces that sexually harassed her at the mattress store. And I hope to God that every single fucking person that she tells that story follows it up with a question and that question should be, why the fuck are you buying underwear at the mattress store? It's it can't be good. And then they go, that's your fault. You know, I hope they all start victim blaming. Well, maybe if you weren't such a sexy grandma, you know, young men wouldn't feel the need, the temptation to go, ooh, a hot grandma, sexy grandma. Oh, my God. I've been thinking about that. That happened two weeks ago. I can't stop thinking about what her life is like now. Do you reckon I if that if that happened to me I would think about that every single time I needed underwear for the rest of my life. So for her she's probably got 3 weeks of thinking about that. Every time she goes I need a new bra, I'm going to go down to the mattress store. But there's her first mistake. And you know what's what 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 like I'll just never I'll never be able to explain myself and even if I was to I would have to come up to her and she would see my braces and go yeah I don't believe him. So look, I just wanted to, I, I just wanted to come on here. That's why I missed an episode last week because I just didn't know how to explain myself and I was hiding from the authorities because I I, I allegedly sexually harassed uh, an, a senior citizen in a mattress store. Okay, and and look, 
karma works in mysterious ways, guys. It really does. Because, you know, on the first episode back on this podcast, last episode, 287, exactly seven days ago, last Sunday, I said, I told a whole story about how I bumped into an old man who had the the biggest meat print in his fucking jeans that I'd ever seen in my life and how I had a 10-minute conversation with the guy, but the only thing that I could focus on was the fact that I could see the exact outline of his cock and it was fucking huge, huge and off-putting. Like it looked like it looked like a uh, an inconvenience for him to wear any sort of clothing down there and he certainly wasn't wearing underwear, okay? And then a few, day, a few days after that, I go to the mattress store and I accidentally, right, harass an old lady. Or maybe I did it on purpose. I made that whole thing up and I'm trying to get ahead of the scandal because I know it's hitting the news next week. That's not what happened. I was talking about my cats. <laughs> such, such a shit excuse. Oh, no, I was talking about um, I was talking about my cats. Yeah, my male cat really wants to have sex with my very elderly old female cat. And the cops go, is he de-sex? And I go, yes. And they go, we don't believe you. Anyway, so I, accident, I, I see old man cock tell you guys about it and then I accidentally sexually harass an old woman and just yesterday fucking karma hit me big time on Instagram where, look, we, well, I'll be up front, I've been through a lot. We all know that. The last two years, three years really, since, since 2019, life hasn't been kind to old Spears. Now, I'm not saying that's karma, although maybe it is. I did a lot of... A lot of uh, questionably legal, definitely immoral shit back in 2012. If you know, you know. <laughs> so maybe that's my comeuppance. And, and yes, I deserve it. But after all this, right, I see this old man cock. I accidentally sexually harass an old woman. And then I go on Instagram and I go, you know what? I've been, I'm proud of myself, Okay. I'm really proud of myself. I've been through a lot the last three years. It's, I've walked through hell. I'm still fucking standing. But not only that, I'm getting back into work. It's going great. I put out some banger videos, an awesome podcast. I'm writing again. It's going good. And I'm, and I'm getting into the gym and I'm eating properly, something that I haven't been able to do for six months, little to no solid food for six months. And I'm fucking, I'm doing all right. I'm not 100% there yet, but I'm getting back on my feet. I... Lost over 10 kilos. And guess what? I've just put on 10 kilos in a month. Okay? So I'm getting to ba almost back to where I was. And I thought, you know what? That's fucking cool. I'm proud of myself. And I'm going to post about that shit to show anyone else that might be sick, mentally unwell, struggling, or just needs a little kick out the ass, that they can do it too. And I post a photo of me. And... I don't know how this got into the photo, but there was there was a gigantic python in one of the photos. There was there was there was a huge python in one of the photos, and a lot of people at first glance might see that and go, "What the fuck is that a snake?" Oh my god, I didn't know we had snakes that big. Are we? Is Lewis at a gym in the Amazon, and a giant anaconda got into got into the photo and? and wrapped itself around his arm. Is he going to be okay? His arm's going to fall off. He's probably losing blood flow to his entire arm. And to those people, I say, relax, don't worry about it. That's actually my tricep. It's not a, that's not a python. But I understand your confusion. <laughs> I'm looking good in the photo, right? Big heartfelt caption. You know, if this happened to me, I'm doing it anyway. Blah, blah, blah. Swipe, right? something I'm most proud of, 110 kilo deadlift personal record. That's almost an all-time best ever. That's a lot of weight. That's heaps, okay? So I post a video of me doing a massive deadlift. I thought, fuck, that's awesome. Good on me. And then I post another photo of me eating KFC because that's funny. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how motivational I am. You guys are here for the jokes. And that's what I'm here to give you. And I post that and I go, you know what? I'm going to start doing that more often. That felt good. And I think it's a good thing to do to show people that bouncing back from bad things is possible. But not only that, you can come back stronger. 
and that made me feel good and I think it's a good thing and a good energy to put out in the world. And then I start reading the comments on that post and every single fucking comment has nothing to do with what I've written, what I've been through, or what I've achieved since starting my journey to recovery. Every single comment is about my dick because in that deadly video, unbeknownst to me, because I was looking at the impressive amount of weight that I was handling, it appears that you can see the full outline of my dick (laughs) in my grey fucking shorts that I knew I shouldn't have worn. I want to throw them out now. I'm never wearing those fucking shorts to the gym and I am never posting anything ever again. Every single fucking comment is about my hog. That's what I fucking get. I know, now I know how, how, I know how it feels. I've done it to you. I am the old man at the cafe with the huge cock. I've done it to everyone who follows me. Do you know how many fucking messages? Like, I was getting texts. I was getting texts from people going, Hey, Lewis, did you know that you posted meat print? Did you mean to do that on purpose? Someone's like, hey, did you break up with Jazz? Is this a thirst trap? No! I thought it was a motivational post. Every fucking comment's about my cock. Man... I just, I thought I was doing a good deadlift. Apparently I was moving some other weight too. Dude, I was, <laughs> I was so fucking embarrassed. But I'm not ashamed, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm like, I'm like, oh, that's embarrassing. But I'm not like, but not in a shameful way. I'm like, oh, that's embarrassing. But I'm also like, yeah, that's right. You know? Oh my God. Dude, the 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 filthy DMs I got from some of some of you animals out there listening is just is here's the thing: some women need to go to prison. A lot of you bitches need to go to jail, okay? Because I see some of the things that you write in messages that you think that I'm not reading, but I am. I read almost everything. It's a bad habit. And some of you women need to be locked away forever. The shit that I'm reading. Okay? Now let's just fucking walk it back. It was a deadlift video. So what I want you to do right now, if you're listening to this, I want you to go onto that post And just write something nice about my deadlift, please. That's all I want. Nice form. Oh, it looks like the bar's bending. Huge cock. Don't do that. There's enough there. I had to delete some. My grandmother follows me. My grandmother follows me and she likes all my stories. And I and I and she only follows about four people, so I know she has time to read the comments. We've had several conversations about comments left on my post. She thinks you're supposed to read Instagram like a book, where you see the post and that's the front cover, but the real meat's in the comments section. And in this situation, the real meat was actually in the image, <laughs> but there was still a lot of meat discussion in the comments, and my grandmother's going to see that. I'm never I'm I'm gonna delete and I'm never posting again for fuck's sake. At least I'm gonna have a great time freaking out people at cafes when I'm 80 years old walking around with no underwear, just fucking hog poking out my jeans. Oh my god. I saw Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, uh live. I didn't see him in person. I saw his show. Uh on the weekend and uh, fuck it was the just the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life 
my dear friend Greeley got me tickets because he knew I was down. I didn't want to go. I haven't. I haven't been a, until that show. I don't think I'd. I had. I had actively avoided all live shows and all stand-up comedy videos uh, because I just couldn't look at it because it made me fucking sad. So it was a great one to to start back up again with. Okay, uh, we went to Chappelle and uh, man, it was at Rod Laver Arena. It was. 15,000 people he performed in the center and he is just the best and it is so fucking obvious. People go what was it like? And I just I can't I can't even say that it was funny. It was, obviously was funny, but I I can't I can't even go it was hilarious. I've seen hilarious comedy before. I've seen amazingly funny. Chappelle's just different. He's just the fucking greatest and it's so obvious. And that to me is the only way that I can fucking explain it is that the entire time I was watching him, I was going, holy fuck, that's incredible. And so were all of his openers. Um, Donnell Rawlins, who I actually hadn't heard of. He's before my time. Uh, I hadn't heard of his older guy. Amazing, fucking hilarious. Uh, and then uh, Jeff Ross as well. He got up and he did this amazing bit uh, about uh, about uh, the Queen fucking Prince Philip to death, which is right up my alley. Um, and uh, yeah, there, another act that I can't remember. Sorry, brother, you were good. <laughs> and then Chappelle got up, and it was just it was phenomenal. Go see him if you can. But I think what the, the coolest thing about the whole show was what happened immediately before Chappelle got on stage and then what happened after when Grilly and I were walking home, which I'll tell you about after. Um, the, the coolest thing about it was he just set the tone, right? They had a live DJ who's ready to see Chappelle pumping music, mixing up Kanye beats, which is cool and kind of funny. Uh, and then before he gets up, the entire arena turns red and he and like sick custom visual intro visuals and music start playing on all the screens and uh and all this kind of stuff and it just man it just reminded me that like fuck that's what your show should be and i always try to make i always always try to do that at my shows even no matter how small it is no matter how big it is i try to make it a fucking experience you know a lot of i think it's like a a real a real lame thing about Australian comedy in particular is I feel like so many comedians are up there apologizing for thinking they're good enough to be on stage. And it's this weird energy of, uh, of telling jokes, but oh, it's okay. They're just lame jokes. And, you know, instead of having like cool walk on music or someone to announce you on, or like a, a, a sick custom track to play or visuals, they just announce, well, welcome to the stage me. And it's just, it's lame. And I think it's like, I think it comes from this, um, this like tall poppy syndrome that we have in our, in our culture where it's like, Oh, if you say that you're good, that means you think you're better than me. And that makes you my enemy, which is not what it is. If I, th if I'm saying that I'm good, especially to an audience of people that have paid good fucking money to be there and spent time and maybe taken work off early or gotten babysitter for the kids or, you know, fucking trick their mum into thinking that it's a PG rated show so they can go with their friends. You know, I'm going to go, yeah, it's going to be fucking good because I know it's good because I've worked on it and I'm here to give you a fucking sick night. That's my attitude going into every show uh, and walking on. I want, it, I want it to be fucking electric when I get on. And that's what he did in just a, like the most badass fucking way that you can really only do in an arena, lights and music and live DJs and everything like that. And it was so fucking cool. And it just made me go, oh yeah, that's, if you want to get really, really, really fucking good, you got to leave this country and go to where the stand up is, right? Because every single opening act was the best comedian that I've ever seen. And they just got better and better and better. And then it was Dave Chappelle. <laughs> It was just amazing. But the coolest thing about his intro was before he got on stage, the Netflix loading thing and the Netflix N came on and then the title of his new special was on there. And I thought that was so fucking badass because that meant that he hasn't even fucking filmed the show that he was performing for us, but it has a name and it has a Netflix 
special already, which is just some only some Dave Chappelle shit. You know, it's like, oh, I'll, I'll sell you five specials. How many do you have? None. But I'm fucking Dave Chappelle, so whatever you get's gonna be good. And it was amazing. He didn't do any any trans stuff at all, really. Uh, he kind of just addressed that he wasn't going to be talking about it, which I thought was cool and refreshing. And, and it also seemed like he seemed to enjoy that too. So I think the whole trans thing with, with Dave Chappelle was obviously he did his jokes and then controversy was caused and he responded to the controversy, which caused more controversy. So he responded to that, which caused more controversy. So he responded to that and which caused more controversy. And then it kind of started to die down a little bit and it's not so fucking egregious and insane that he has to respond to it. He has other things. He can just talk about, you know, tell stories and jokes and stuff. And man, I don't want to rave too, too much on about it because it's somebody else's show, but fuck, it was good. Almost as good as what happened after. Okay, now... This is, you know, you, you, ever, you ever see something and you're like, fuck, I didn't, even, I didn't even know you could just do that. Do you know what I mean? I had no idea you could do that. I've should, I should have been doing this my whole life. Like you see something so cool and amazing, shocking and inspiring that you go, why have I been living my life other than like that? You know? Me and Greeley, right? If you don't know Greeley, he's an Australian rapper. He also does a bit of comedy as well. He's from Tasmania. Um, one of my my best friend. Known him for fucking years. Uh, known him since 2012. So going on 11 fucking years of friendship. Uh, I think that's wrong. Maybe nine years. Doesn't matter. Very good friend. All right. Got me tickets to see Dave Chappelle. We're both fucking hyped up. We're leaving. I'm going, man, that's what comedy should be. I'm so inspired. Thank you so much. I love comedy. It's so good. I can't wait to get back into it again. Now that I can speak and stuff, I want to put shows on, say, I want to do this, I want to do that. I had a great fucking time. And uh, we're walking to the station. It's really late because we got dinner after. It's very late. Trying to get the last train home. And... Uh, as we're walking towards Flinders Street Station, me and Greeley, uh, these three boys, young boys, 18, 19 maybe, they're walking away from the station. So they've, their night's kind of fully underway, if you know what I mean. They're all pissed ass, carrying beer, which I think is illegal. I don't know. I don't drink. I wouldn't know. We're walking to the station. We're walking fast. They're walking away from the station. They're also walking fast. Group of three boys. All of them start going, oh, Greeley, Lewis, you guys are fucking mad, can't you? Hey, how you going? Blah, blah, blah. And we go, hey, boys, how you going? I fist bump one of them. Greeley sticks his hand out, shakes the hand of another one. And then he goes, sorry, fellas, we've got to catch the train. And they're walking away from us. We're, and we're, they're walking the opposite direction. Was we pass each other real quick like that. We all say hi, real nice. Start walking to the station. One of them then breaks off from the group, starts following us going, you don't give a fuck about us. You don't give a fuck about us. Real drunk, real angry, following us to the train station. Some fucking drunken idiot, right? We said hello to them, but this guy wanted, I don't know, a fucking cuddle and a kiss. I don't know what the cunt wanted. We're in a hurry. They seem to be in a hurry. We're catching the train. I love meeting fans. It's an amazing part of my job, but I don't want to have a fucking 20-minute conversation with someone when I'm trying to catch my fucking train and they are drunk, all right? It's not what I want to do. I'll fist bump you. I'll say hello. We d I did it. I, I did it all, all right? I was nice, Okay. And he starts following, you don't give a fuck about us. Oh, you think you're famous. You don't give a fuck about us. Starts following us, yelling shit at us, going, these fucking dogs, screaming shit, right? Follows us for ages. Now, I'm, I'm a comedian, right? So this is happening, and I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. And I just ignore the guy. I'm, I'm, I'm going home. I'm just going to, I pick up my pace a little bit. I ignore the guy, all right? Now, that's the appropriate response if you're a comedian. Now, Greeley, my good friend, is a rapper. He's been to prison. So what he does is he responds appropriately and he turns around and walks right up to the guy and goes, we said hello, don't follow us and don't be a fucking rude cunt and slaps the guy in the face. Dude, the best slap I've ever seen in my fucking life. Have you seen that shit slap fight show that the UFC bought 
where those those cunts like slap each other and they set up microphones to catch the sound of the slap and they're wearing like lifting chalk on their hands and it's a big plume. Dude, I saw that shit in real life. It was like, it was the best. Have you ever heard a perfect dap? Have you ever heard someone fucking dap someone up so well that it reverberates and echoes and it's like the clap goes into another dimension and everyone in the room goes, wow, that sounded nice. It was like an ASMR dap clap. That's the sound that Greeley's massive fucking bare Tasmanian hand made hitting this drunk cunt in the face. Dude, I watched it and when that happened, the whole world went in slow motion. And we're in the city, by the way. It's fucking packed. We're in civilized civilization. <laughs> we're in civilized society. And Greeley turns around and goes, don't follow us. You're being rude. We said hello. Slap. The guy's beer goes all over himself. His friends, by the way, when this is happening, okay, I immediately look past Greeley because the guy was real small, real young, uh, and just real fucking drunk. Uh, and so I'm not worried about him. I look past Greeley to his friends. I'm like, fuck, are we going to have to fight three people? Even his friends are way off in the distance. So they didn't even know that this was happening. They were like, oh, what a fucking idiot. They ditched him. And dude... This guy had no idea what to do. When I, I've never seen a more stunned person in my life. Just, I think that's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. So I've, I've, I've had very, very, very few negative interactions in public. That's one of them. I've got to have, in 10 years of doing this, I would have to have, honestly, I can think of three, including that one. I had no idea that you could just slap someone in the face. <laughs> I was, my eyes have been opened. I was like, what? You can do that? So that's going to be my new policy, all right? If you meet me in the street, if I don't like your your expression, you're getting a slap. No, I would never. Well, well you know what? In, in this scenario, if I went back again... I'd be the one to turn around. Don't fucking follow me drunk, screaming shit in the street. You'll get slapped. How about that? That's a fair thing. But, I, dude, I had no idea that you could do that. Uh, and I, I, I said to Grill, I was like, that's, that's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And, and, he, and he goes, yeah, that felt good. I haven't slapped someone for a while, hey. <laughs> Which is just... So Australian rap of him. Um, and now you might be thinking, oh, what about this poor person? And he was just a bit drunk. First of all, he deserved it. Second of all, the next day, Greeley sends me a screenshot. The guy's messaged him and has gone, dude, thanks so much for the pimp slap last night. I'm never washing the left side of my face ever again. And that's how you know that he was a fan of Oz rap and not comedy. Yeah, that's, that's got to be the, dude, the sound that it made. Because here's the thing. We were, if you know Melbourne City, right, or, or any city, it's like a really, really big, long street. And at the end of it was like a very solid building. So when you do that, when you make a clapping noise towards a solid building, the sound comes back at you immediately. Melbourne CBD is like a grid. So you're surrounded on all sides by solid buildings, right? So Greeley slaps this guy in the face, right? Don't follow us. I said hello. Stop being a rude cunt. And the fucking noise that it made, it was like someone put reverb on that motherfucker. Every single cunt stopped what they were doing and turned to look. The whole city went silent. It's like he hit the kid in the face and the power went out and then the world went into slow motion. It was the greatest shit I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and it happened in Minecraft. It's not true. It didn't happen at all. It was. Uh, it was. A, it happened in a, in a video game. It was a sim. It happened in VR. In case any um, police are watching this, it happened in virtual reality, and I made it up. Didn't happen. But if it if it was to have happened, fuck, it was good. And I don't think I'll. And I think that. It doesn't matter how many more memories I make with Greeley. I already know that's the one. <laughs> like, that's the fucking one. Okay. 
What else has been happening here? Um, okay, so I, I, uh... I've got a hot take on the AI porn situation, okay? Artificial porn, artificial intelligence, art AI generated porn is becoming a thing. And it's it's always been a thing, but it's it's becoming quite realistic now. Like if, on TikTok, I saw an AI generated video and audio of Obama, Donald Trump and Joe Biden playing Minecraft and arguing over what they're going to do with their diamonds. You know, like that's, and it sounded real. So like, I, there were a bunch of comments from like nine-year-old kids going, when did they do this? So like, this is coming, all right? If, if, I, if I can watch Donald Trump play Minecraft, you know, stealing diamonds to make a fucking diamond hoe, and then Joe Biden getting indescribably angry and banning Trump from his Minecraft server... I already know that I'm going to also be able to watch Jill Biden, you know, fucking Obama as an AI generation very soon. If not fucking right now, if I Googled it, I have Googled it. You can't find it yet. So AI generated porn has become this big thing because a bunch, because a bunch of female streamers are being turned into basically porn stars against their will, which is horrible. Okay. Um, but uh, obviously, women are up in arms about this, and they should be. Okay, um, and I think that it's uh, I think that it's wrong. Uh, I think that it should be illegal to make pornographic video of someone using their likeness uh, without their consent. I think that I mean, it shouldn't be illegal outright. It should be it should be illegal to monetize without consent. You can't make money for anything getting people to do stuff using their likeness. Um, but I fuck it, man. It should almost be illegal to do anything other than shit. That's like clearly parody. Do you know what I mean? Like obviously fucking Donald Trump's not playing Minecraft with Joe Biden. So, so surely no one's going to believe that that's real other than the thousands of nine year olds on TikTok that I saw. But I feel like maybe that's the only exception that I would make. But also I'm quite biased because uh, as a comedian, that technology excites me a lot. Anyway, women are up in arms about it. And I got a hot take here, okay? The main argument that people are making against AI art, all right, AI generated porn is going, it is morally wrong to sexually objectify someone uh, like that against their will. It's morally wrong to put people in sexual situations using art and then to jack off to that. That's wrong, okay? It's absolutely disgusting and is borderline digital rape uh, to, you know, put someone in a sexually compromising position against their will using their likeness uh, with artificial intelligence uh, and creating videos for it. And to that I say I agree, all right, but also... How is that that much different from fan uh, porn? Fan, what's it called? Fuck, I had such a good point. Uh, oh my God, it's all gone down the drain. Fucking fan fiction. How's that different? Can you explain that to me? How is it? Obviously, it's less bad, but how is it like fine? Do you know what I mean? Clearly less bad than AI generated porn making a video of some Twitch streamer fucking herself. But how is it fine to be writing fan fiction about, about male actors doing gay shit with other male actors that you like? You know, because if we're gonna ha if we're gonna enter in the conversation of it's 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 morally wrong to depict people sexually against their will, where does that stop? Because personally, <clears throat> someone was making fan fiction of me and genuinely jacking off to it. I don't like that. I think that's creepy as fuck. And I would I would dislike being made into 3D AI generated porn even less, but I still wouldn't like someone making like an uh, an audio version using my voice or a text version, you know, using a fucking fan fiction website. But for some reason, all right, I'm seeing just about 100% of every fucking woman in the world upset about this AI generated porn shit as they should be, but they are the 
biggest by far consumer of erotic fan fiction. Google Pedro Pascal on any fan fiction website right now. Guess what you're going to find? Pages and pages and books and books and books of erotic fan fiction of him doing gay things, of him fucking young girls, of him having sex with other female actors against their will without their consent. I mean, it's obviously not as bad, but to me it's in the same hemisphere as AI porn. Am I wrong? You know, people go, oh, but there's there's no harm caused. I mean, there's no harm caused by AI porn other than emotional distress, which is harm, obviously. But is fan fiction different because it's slightly less emotional harm? No one's hurt. They're less creeped out, but it's still, to me, creepy as fuck to be going, oh, I think Keanu Reeves is hot. I want to read a story about him sucking dick in a bathroom. <laughs> Am I wrong? I'm genuinely... That's my genuine opinion. Am I wrong? I think that I have a fucking valid as fuck point here. And if you're going to be against AI art, AI generated porn, you've got to be against fan fiction too because they're in the same fucking realm of depicting people sexually against their will without their consent. In many cases, uh, monetized as well. What do we think? I don't know. Just a thought that I had. Um, <clears throat> right, what else do I want to get here? Um, we're coming up to the end of the podcast here. Uh, the Misfits video came out, which I loved. Um, I, uh, I love their version. I love my version. It's probably, in terms of like, I would say it's like the best YouTube video I've ever made. Not necessarily the best video I've, I've ever made, but it's my, it was my first shot at like, I'm going to create like a video, like a YouTube video experience where there's like a, a giant quest we have to go on that has a beginning and a middle and an end that at the start I kind of hook it and here's the challenge and I tell the story in an, 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 an as, as engaging way as possible. And fuck, that was the most difficult thing to edit. That is the real reason why I missed last week's episode is <clears throat> because... Obviously, the Misfits hit me up to do this <coughs> video. I produced their whole video. So I'm actually in the Patreon episode. If you're interested, I'm going to go into the entire uh, saga of, of the whole breakdown of how we even got to this idea, how it was organized, how it was pulled off, and then how we did the videos. And basically, I produced a live event. I also produced their video. Uh, and then I basically organized fucking everyone and everything and how it was down to how it was fucking filmed and then how their video was paced and then also scripted my video, filmed my video, edited my video. Um, such a monster edit. And uh, I was like, cool, I'll do this. I just, I just really want to get my video out very close to your video so that I can get some, some views off, off you guys. And it's a good collab for both of us. Right. Uh, and I was like, just whatever you do, before you release the video, right, when you think it's going to be done, give me like two weeks notice so I can turn around my version and release it very close to yours. And they were like, yeah, sweet, no worries. And then uh, I, I text Fitz uh, the other day and I go, hey, just um, an update on the Misfits video. What's going on? Is it coming out soon? And he goes, yeah, I think it's coming out tomorrow. And I went, what the fuck? I haven't even started it. And then I was like, can you fucking delay it? Please, I'm, I gotta get my version out. It wasn't his fault, by the way. Uh, it was it was the the every, everyone else on that team, right? Uh, Fitz is my boy, and uh, he goes, "Oh yeah, um, I'll ask him." And then fucking they call me and they go, "Yeah, we've delayed it by one day." And I, and my stupid brain goes, "Yeah, cool, that's enough time. I can I can get this done in in 24 hours." I call up Keelan and I go, "Mate, it's a fucking editing emergency. I don't have any money, but I need you in this chair right now." And uh, and uh, I forgot that he's dead and I called his phone and I got his voicemail and his voicemail said, hey, you've called Keelan. If you're poor, get a job and it's your fault. Anyway, leave a message unless you're homeless or disabled. And I just remembered that uh, I miss my buddy. So I hung up and I started editing this video and uh, dude, I fucking, I reckon... I personally, I wrote it across an entire day. It took me an entire day to write it because it's such a big video. It took me like 40 hours. 
And I was up until 6 a.m. one day editing, and then I woke up at 10 a.m. to edit, and it still came out many days after their video, but I think it's one of, one of my best. So go check it out. Go check out their version. And if you want to hear how we pulled off the whole thing, I'm going to talk about that right now on Patreon. So thank you very much uh, for listening, for watching. I will talk to you guys next Sunday unless a giant emergency video comes out of nowhere uh, that I have to fucking do maximum time crunch by myself because, you know, I, I don't have a team anymore and Keelan's dead. So thanks for watching and listening. Uh, I'll talk to you next Sunday, and I hope you have a shit one. I'll see you on Patreon right now. Bye. You know, you can't you can't really write material for someone else. You can add a joke in. Like, if you watch the Misfits video, I wrote a joke for Swagger Souls, but it was just a... It was just a, a an addition to a joke that he wrote. He was he wrote a, quite a funny joke about the differences between Australia and American culture, uh, and uh, and it was very very dark. So I. Uh, listened to his joke. He was telling all of us, we're kind of laughing and, and adding little bits in. And then I was like, oh, this is really dark. This is really fucked up. But if you want to go there, you can go. Um, uh, we also have different folk heroes. For example, uh, in Australia, one of our most famous folk heroes is a guy that uh, killed police, Ned Kelly. But in America, one of our most famous folk heroes is a guy who was killed by police, George Floyd. Right, really fucked, really dark, but I thought it suited his theme. I just threw it out there, and I thought, you know what, I, you know, if he wants to do this, he's got balls, and he has balls. <laughs>